In the words of the founders of Justice Democrats, Jank Uger and Kyle Kalinske, back in 2017, or was it at the end of 2016? The way they described Justice Democrats, the way they sold it to their audience and to the left to raise millions and millions of dollars in small donations was, this is their words, not mine. We aren't there to make friends. We aren't there to play patty cakes. We aren't there to get along with the Democratic leadership. This is a hostile takeover of the Democratic Party. And if you do not get on board with our agenda, if you continue to take corporate cash and serve corporate interest, you are our enemy just as much as the Republicans and will defeat you. But ever since, just as Democrats like Ilhan Omar, Rashid Tlaib, and their star poster child AOC step foot in Congress, they've done the exact opposite. Starting with when it was time to pick a new Speaker of the House and the, the queen of corporatist tools, Nancy Pelosi, needed their vote, they gave it to her and got nothing in return. And ever since they, then, back in early 2019, in January 2019, they have made it crystal clear that their allegiance is to the party over the people. And call me naive, but it's really pissing me off that the same people who pushed justice Democrats on us, who sold us this as the solution to, the, to get left-wing policies, refuse to acknowledge what an epic failure they've been since they've gotten to Congress and how they've turned into some of the worst partisan hacks, the exact opposite of what they promised. Instead, they keep doubling down on this clearly failed strategy and not acknowledging all the evidence that points to the fact that we aren't taking over the Democratic Party, at least not anytime soon. It is a fool's errand. All these Justice Democrats, they're frauds. They sold themselves as these revolutionaries taking over the Democratic Party by force. But every single action they've taken, every single decision they've made just shows how much they are just partisan hacks and they're going to go along with the Democratic Party and they will not buck the leadership no matter what. No matter how corrupt and corporatist their policies are, they will not stand up to the leadership of the party. They will not stand up to Nancy Pelosi. When it came time to fight against the biggest upward transfer of wealth in history, in human history, and to fight for a real economic package for the people, a people's bailout in the time of unprecedented crisis, unprecedented economic crisis, and a raging global pandemic. When the CARES Act, the corporate scam that was the CARES Act, was being pushed through Congress, where was the Justice Democrats? Where was, where was their big fight? Where was their big opposition? Nowhere to be found. The best we got was AOC and Rashida Tlaib uh, stomping their feet and pointing the fingers at the Republican, completely ignoring the fact that the Democrats have complete and entire control over their House of Congress, where they work. The Democrats have complete control, yet they were pointing the finger at Republicans and blaming Republicans for the corporate scam that was the CARES Act. If Nancy Pelosi didn't like it, if the Democratic Party didn't like it, they didn't have to pass it. They could have wrote anything they want to counter whatever the Republicans were proposing in the Senate and from the White House. But they didn't. They went along with it. In fact, they helped write the corporate scam that was the CARES Act. And in the end, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Bernie Sanders, all these so-called lefties, uh, Pramila Jaipal, Ro Khanna, they all went along with it. And none of them backed Kyle, uh, Thomas Massey when he called for a recorded vote on the floor because none of them wanted a recorded vote because what, they went along with it. And just like everybody else in Congress, they didn't want to be held responsible for it. And all the while, they were bragging about all the good things they got. Oh, look at the cheese in the trap. Look at the, the, the one-time $1,200 stimulus payment that, that we got in the CARES Act. Oh, look at this temporarily expanded unemployment that some people might get, but a, a huge amount of people will not. And there'll be giant waits and backlog, backlogs on the, in the unemployment systems in the individual states. But just look at all the good stuff we got you. 
And they were telling us six months ago, they were telling us, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We might not get everything we wanted in the, in the CARES Act right now, but there's more legislation coming down the road and we're going to get all the good stuff. Oh, we'll get all of the good stuff. We'll get Medicare for you, Medicare for all for you. We'll get you that $2,000 UBI. Oh, you're going to get all the good stuff. This is what AOC and all the Justice Democrats were telling us, right? Six months later, not a goddamn thing else has passed. Nothing, nothing, nothing. 40 million people still at risk of eviction. Trump temporarily suspended the evictions after thousands and thousands of people have already been evicted. He temporarily extend, extended the, the moratorium to December, but still, when the moratorium's up, all those people are going to have to pay that back rent. 40 million people are going to have to pay back rent, or they're going to get evicted. The Democrats, still six months later, control an entire House of Congress, have not passed anything. Now, where the Justice Democrats to call Nancy Pelosi out on that? Where are they to call her out? On the, on the giant, unprecedented corporate bailout, giving trillions of dollars to the richest people in the country, and then uh, uh, having absolutely no urgency to bail out the regular people. Six months later, and still nothing. You would think that the revolutionaries, the people who are coming to do a hostile takeover of the Democratic Party, to call out the corruption in the Democratic Party, you would think that they would have something to say about uh, uh, this inaction by their own leadership. But no. It's all the Republicans' fault. You hear, if you ever hear them complain about the economic response to, to this crisis, it's always the Republicans' fault. It's never Democratic leadership. It's never both parties. It's just the, the Republicans. Like I said, they ran on being revolutionaries, but they turned into the worst kind of, of partisan hacks. Where were they and their big opposition to the Democratic Party and Democratic leadership during Russiagate? Oh, there was no opposition. They all went along with Russiagate and this whole ridiculous notion of Russian interference. Oh, those Ruskies, they stole the election and, and installed Donald Trump to be president. They all went along with that. And I have never, ever heard one of them acknowledge the fact that one, the biggest claim of Russian interference all traces back to this allegation that they hacked the DNC emails and gave them to WikiLeaks so that they could publish them. One, that's never been proven. Never heard them once say that. Two, regardless who gave us that information, they never talk about the substance, just like the rest of the partisan hacks in the Democratic Party. The Justice Democrats, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Ro Khanna, Pramila Jaipal, they never talk about the substance of what we learned from the DNC email leaks. They never even, I have yet to hear them mention that it was the DNC that got caught in broad daylight rigging the 2016 primary against Bernie Sanders in a coordinated effort between the White House, mainstream media, corporate media, the entire DNC and the Clinton campaign, as well as, as uh, elected members of the Democratic Party at the state and, and federal level, all conspired to rig the, the primary against Bernie Sanders, the left wing of the Democratic Party, that same left wing that these Justice Democrats are supposed to represent. I have never once heard them criticize the Democratic Party for this. Instead, they went an entire another Democratic presidential primary campaign, didn't mention it. On top of that, now they're out, even, even though there was more shady, shady uh, uh, going on and funny business in this primary. We just don't have the WikiLeaks and the DNC emails to catch them in broad daylight like we did last time. Even though all of that, no mention of, of the DNC trickery and how they undermine the left in, in primaries and outright cheat them in primaries. And instead, they're going around and going to shill and gaslight for the, the head corporatist, chief neoliberal Joe Biden and tell all the left to go vote for him because they have no choice. That's what they're doing. Again, they're partisan hacks. While Julian Assange is being persecuted and prosecuted and tortured as we speak, facing extradition to the United States, will he be assassinated, definitely tortured, or at the very least in prison for the rest of his life? Not one of them have the integrity to come out 
and speak truth to power and defend Julian Assange. Not one of them do. And you know why? Because they got the edict. They got the order from on high in the Democratic Party. Nobody is out is, is supposed to come out and defend uh, uh, Julian Assange because they of the what the rush the Russian interference and the ele- allegations that that they interfered in the 2016 election and gave WikiLeaks the the DNC emails. So they got that order from on high in the Democratic Party and none of them have bucked it. None of them have come to the defense of Julian Assange. You go and look. I dare someone to find me a mention of AOC or Ilhan Omar or Sheeta Tlaib defending Julian Assange from any from the time they they've won their election to now, to this day. I would love to see an example of that. And, and Bernie Sanders is just as, as, as shitty and he's part of that same crowd of I'm not going to actually defend Julian Assange because the Democratic Party told me not to. They, they slapped me on the hand and they said, you better not come out and defend this man. Because he exposed the corruption in the Democratic Party. And it's funny, like I said, these revolutionaries all towing the line of the Democratic Party. Whatever they say, they go along with. Where's their opposition to the imperialism and the rank militarism in the Democratic Party? Again, there is none. I've seen Ilhan Omar. She's uh, uh, done. She's grilled a couple of Trump officials for their participation in imperialism, for their participation in war crimes. Um, you remember her tough questioning of war criminal Elliot Abrams. Okay, yeah, she did that. I have yet to hear any Justice Democrat come out and criticize their own party that slapped down even a 10% cut in the Pentagon budget to reallocate that to, to necessary social programs here in the United States during a time of crisis. Their own party, like I said, controls the House of Congress that they work in. And the Democratic Party overwhelmingly slapped down a 10% cut in the military budget. They said, no, give them all the money. Give them all the money they can ever ask for. Give them a blank check to fund imperialism so that Donald Trump can drop bombs, on a record number of bombs, on countries around the world. The Democratic Party agreed to that. I must have missed it when the Justice Democrats came out and, and it showed what they, they really mean business with this hostile takeover of the Democratic Party and laid out Nancy Pelosi and the, the, the corrupt corporate Democrats, the neocons in the Democratic Party, who continue to increase the Pentagon budget. After the Afghanistan papers, after Trump says we're in Syria to steal the oil, after all the war crimes in Iraq, Afghanistan, and, and in Yemen, the worst humanitarian crisis on this planet, a genocide, a wanton genocide. And the Democrats still say, let's give the Pentagon, let's give the military more money. I have never heard the Justice Democrats criticize them for it because they're partisan hacks. When it comes to the regime change effort in Venezuela, the Democratic Party is just as invested in trying to overthrow Nicolas Maduro, the democratically elected president of Venezuela, and install a puppet uh, uh, to U.S. corporation Juan Guaido, as he, they're just as invested in that as, as Trump and the Republicans. And what has what did the Justice Democrats say when this was at its height? Oh, AOC's words, her own words. I defer to party leadership on the issue of Venezuela. The same party leadership that is backing covert actions to overthrow Nicolas Maduro, who's imposing crippling sanctions on the Venezuelan people that have killed or at least hundreds of thousands of people at this point, blocking food and medicine from getting to that country. She defers to party leadership. Like I said at the beginning, maybe I'm naive, but I would hope, Jenk, kind of a lost cause to me at this point, but at least Kyle Kalinske, I would hope that he would have the integrity to be able to come out and say, you know what, I was wrong. We thought we were doing a hostile takeover of the Democratic Party. That's what I signed on for. But ever since these Justice Democrats have gotten to Congress, they've gotten no results. And they bend the knee to the leadership of the Democratic Party, the corporatists in the Democratic Party. 
at every single turn. So you know what? I was wrong. Maybe this isn't the best strategy. Maybe we should try something else. Maybe we should uh, uh, focus entirely on direct action, organizing uh, general strikes, and and pro like I said, direct action, protesting outside of politicians. Maybe that's the only way we get Medicare for all in UBI. And we should stop supporting Justice Democrats because they're clearly just going along with, with whatever the, the party leadership says. No. They're going to double down on it. They're going to continue to, to uh, try to jam Justice Democrat candidates down our throats and acting like they're going to change a goddamn thing when they get to Congress. Even backing corporatists like Ed Markey, who's taking corporate cash in this very election cycle, they were all out there breaking their backs to get Ed Markey elected. And oh, watch them do a little jig after he beats a, a corporate Democrat, Joe Kennedy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And you guys already know how I feel about Ed Markey. Voted for the Iraq War, voted for the Patriot Act, voted to increase the military uh, uh, budget multiple times. Taking money from Wall Street, millions of dollars from Wall Street, big pharma, private health insurance companies. So I would hope that Kyle Kalinske and other people who I have some level of respect left for in left new media could admit that they're wrong and, and call out these Justice Democrats. Call them out for the partisan hacks that they are. But they won't.